funny, funny, funny guy. BB, good evening, Mr. Phil. How are you tonight? Good evening, Lori. Better known as? Or AKA? LS. Correct. And you are? BB. Oh, I thought you forgot for how a many moment. Meanings? I'm like, oh. But how many meanings of BB? Oh, it has two. We go over this. The fans are going to get bored with this because yeah. we go over this every week. If they don't know, they're not paying attention. I had a big thing in my hair here. What's going yeah. on? <laughs> okay. <Lord. laughs> so what is on? What's happening in your world, BB? Uh, well, um, we're getting ready for our telethon here. And the date? October 13th. October 13th. All right. A Saturday. Saturday, October 2 o'clock till? 2 o'clock. Till whenever. Whenever. And Sounds like like when you go to a party or you go to a, like a place and says seven p.m. We till hope to make whenever. it. We hope to make it an eight-hour telethon. Oh, that would be good. Okay. And who's staying here that late? <laughs> I'm, I have to do it. Yeah, you can do it, BB. You can do it. <laughs> Just don't forget at the end I have to. Do the traditional. Uh, I know. The traditional closing. You I'll probably leave and come back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with You're the a trooper. I still keep it up. The traditional closing of "You'll Never Walk Alone." Oh. You know that. I still and what happened when I sang that? Oh yeah. I did a show. I'm sure everybody's heard this, but I did a show. I'm up on stage, and there's Phil and Sandy's. You know, it, it was a sold out show. Sitting in the audience. And I start singing, You'll Never Walk Alone. I see Phil sobbing his eyes out. I mean, sobbing, tears streaming down. Ah, my vision's not that terrific, okay? And I'm seeing him, and he's not sitting in the front row. And, you know, the lights are a little blinding. I see him sitting there. Uh, his face is covered in tears. And I mean, covered in tears. I'm like, I couldn't look at him anymore. I was ready to start crying. I was like, oh. That's it, I can't I look at him. So I had to look over at somebody else and think of something else. And then I look over at him, he's still crying, crying, crying. You had to do it a second time. Oh, uh, well, the rest of the you know, I just did the song the way it's written, you know. And uh, you do the whole, like, chorus part there. Right. And then you go back to, you know. And anyway, you were crying through the whole song. I will never forget that for as long as I live. Ever. What about what you did to me? 9.55? Oh, is that when you, the one that was you thought was your last show? Yeah. Well, I'm okay. You you tell it better than I do. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, that show was a two-hour special. Yes. Okay. And then at the end, they were making like jokes, carrying out. The yeah, they were carrying. I was singing. Yeah. Uh, I had a dream. Yes. And they were carrying the furniture out. Yes. And then uh, you closed. Uh, then it's five minutes to go. And I said, well, I made it through an hour and 55 minutes. Correct. No go problem. Ahead. I'm looking at the exit sign. Five minutes to go. Five minutes to go, not a tear. Because you thought you were going to be teary-eyed like most of the show. I said, bro, don't worry about it. You won't be. Right. So go ahead. Finish the story. So then you said, I got something very special I want to sing for you. Look at me, you, look at, you look to me with those baby eyes of yours. <laughs> the way you said, I got something very special I want to sing for you. And go ahead. And you sang, you'll never walk alone, and that was it. Time number two. Ooh. 9.55, and we went off the air at 10, 10 right? yeah. And he was so happy he didn't shed one tear the whole show. And I was like, I'm going to get him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get him. <laughs> and I had a funny feeling it wasn't our last show, although you were convinced, right? At that time. I had a funny, yeah, I had a funny feeling. And meanwhile, we're still here going strong. And strong now. Strong as ever. As ever. Okay, and I tell mean, everybody about the different markets we're in. And I mean, and back then we were a little local show in Port Jervis, uh, as we, st we still are now, but we only had the Port Jervis uh, Deer Park market then. Right, right. And uh, That was about maybe 25,000 or so. Yeah. 27,000. Then um, <coughs> a year and a half later, we moved into uh, the rest of Hudson Valley. We changed our format of our show. That's right. And then in the past year, we went into Manhattan Cable, which is that's right working out great. And so now that we're, we're on somewhere, some day of the every day of the week, right? <laughs> somewhere Saturday somehow. morning at this time, Tuesday night at this time, Wednesday night at this time, Friday night at this time, right? Right. So pretty much, if you want to see the show, you can see it. And we want to say congratulations to Carl Richards. He's getting 
Starting in September, his show into Manhattan Cable, too. Really? I did not know that. Yes. Y does he know he has to do all originals? He's been doing all, he's very strict oh, about okay, that. Oh, okay, good. Now he is. He wasn't always, right? Well, back then, it, you know, when it we were local, matter, yeah. it didn't matter, you know, but now that we're doing all these markets, good. and it's working out better, I mean, because we're giving people a chance to uh, show their Showcase their themselves, yeah. Show their music. Yeah, we love it. You know, and, and we love it, and it's working there out fine. There is so and much and great yes. talent, like raw talent and undiscovered talent, and... You know, we just I mean, we're loving it. And the how caliber, right? That's why we. That's how we got that. Uh, you know, those awards from Destry Records yeah. for my anniversary show because of uh, bringing these people out who have their own original music that would have no other way to get such exposure. Yeah, that's what it's really. It's makes your heart feel good. Oh yes, it, it does. really does. It's it very really does. You know, heartwarming. And yes. uh, it was well worth it. What we did, I mean. Huh? Every once in a while, we'll do a cover show. Like right. just every once in a while, but mostly it's all originals. Yeah. And it's just so great because the caliber of talent, it's not oh. like somebody singing drunk doing karaoke. You know yeah, what right. I mean? You get, the, you get people that are writing their, so of course, writing their own songs and performing their songs or performing with a band that they've you know, brought together. And they're really into it and they're dedicated. And, you know, it's just, you know, it's really, I mean, really a great thing. Yes, you gotta see. I mean, uh, you look back at these shows and see the the, sm the the looks on these people's face. They're so proud being up there. I mean, you couldn't, they, you know, you couldn't do anything uh, better than that. I mean, and it feels good to you too. No, you're giving the exposure. Yeah. Because let's put it this way: this could be the start of something big for them. Yeah. Well, I mean, Manhattan alone is what five or seven million, right? Right. And then there's Poughkeepsie, there's Sullivan County, there's Orange County, there's. Um, the, H well, the Hudson Valley, I guess that's mostly um, Ulster. Ulster counties. Thank you, Fritz. Right. We love Fritz. Um, and, you know, it, it's just so it's really, really good. And what are you looking up there? He's digging away in his pocket. I think you're looking for gold in there, huh? I got some. Or dust bunnies, maybe. <laughs> what do you have? You have oh, a I million know. cards. You better not ever lose that. <gasps> Is that the... Oh. I want to uh, give you your... Your own. <laughs> my own card? Your oh. own card. Your own All card. right, there it is. There's my own Access 23 TV card. Yeah. And did you have to pick such a, ter a horrific picture on there? Oh, my God. That's a horrible picture. <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty. I like it. Yeah, it's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> okay, but anyway, I have my own card. Yeah, now, yeah. Another, I have a military ID. I have my driver's license. I have this. Well, so I'm in like got, Flint. So if you get stopped, you can show that. Yeah, there so you go. Look who I am. I'm, I'm the, I'm I really, <laughs> probably this wouldn't be the first idea I would show, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't really see it so good, but that's probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so what's going on for tonight? You're gonna, s you're going to sing, right? Yes. And because we're getting near 9/11. You're I'm going to do, do Let's Stand Tall? I'm going to oh, we'll do uh, We'll Stand Tall. Okay. And then we have a really nice guest coming yes, up. Yes, right? we do. A folk singer, you told yes. me. Great. You know, today, I called up the uh, Muscular Dystrophy Association. Oh, okay. To talk about their recent uh, Labor Day. Uh, Extravaganza. Uh, yeah. Well, it's, not, it's no longer called a telethon because it's a three-hour show, the show of strength. Ah, okay, a little different marketing there. Yes, okay. and told them, you know, they did a great job and all that because they real. I'm telling you, they their entertainment was phenomenal. Wow, who did they have? They were they had Carrie Underwood and uh, wow, you know a lot right. of the uh, the young, a lot of the young talent that they had, you know. Good, and, uh, good, good. I called them up to tell them, uh, you know, what a great show it is, and you know, in the New York market, like. In the three hours, they made over three million dollars. Nice. Well, that's why they cut it down. They went smart and short, apparently. You know, I guess the early hours and the late hours, people aren't watching or aren't donating as much, so they're trying to be c more cost effective. I guess I don't know. Right. So you anyway. know, but I the the funniest thing, I gave them some advice on, you know, even better things that they could, like ah. they could, that like they could do in the future. You know what I mean? What'd you say? I said to them that I do it. I told them that I've been doing a telethon of my own 
for 18 years, and right. I said the idea is to 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 get the people to touch their hearts. Otherwise, it's not going to work. That's true. You know, and uh, I said the only thing that worries me is you know when you're catering with strictly young entertainment, these kids don't have jobs and they don't have money to give and oh stuff like right that. Right so right I said, right, yeah. you know, something like that. That's a good point. Something Phoebe. like that really yeah, worries me. And I said, um, you all, I said, you all, and I was telling them, like, for instance, when I used to be uh, with Jerry, the way they used to show these things and it would, like, get people emotional to go to the phone and right. call. I said, you can't just say, give money, expect, you know, people to right, do it. Right, you have to touch their hearts. You have to touch their hearts and all that. And yeah. I told them how I'm doing a telethon for our station and how I could do it. And this isn't even, you know, a disease, but yet I know how to touch the people's hearts, what to say and all that, and how to get it You're a master. Yes. Y you know, the, this all started back in uh, 2001, right after 9-11. We ran our okay. telethon that year. Right, because it was September, so that would have been October. October. So we ran our telethon. At that time, it used to be uh, an all-day Sunday thing. Okay. Which we later on switched to. Didn't it start at like 12 instead? It used to start at 12 and go to 8. Yeah. You know, it used to be a, a Sunday, a Sunday okay, all day Okay, instead of a thing. Saturday. But we were competing yeah, yeah. with the NFL and then the world. Oh. A lot of times. So that was smart to move it to Saturday. Yeah, it was smart. And it seems that it's worked better to move it to yeah. Saturday. And so we had to move it. Uh, so we moved to Saturday. But when it was on Sunday, you know, the early hours, you know, we didn't. Do too good because you had the NFL and stuff. Oh, ah, you know, it's the competition. It was a competition. So, this telethon, we were all worried how we were going to do it after 9 11 and stuff like right. that. I bet you it was your best telethon ever. Yes. Well, except for our recent ones. Yes, up until that time it was. Yeah. But the funniest thing, I took this one girl who had been on my show. She was an actress from New York City and a singer and all that. She knew just what to say, how to how to move in there with me. And then I took this other girl, and, and I was saying to the people, like, it's these people that are our volunteers. And I said how I could call them up in a spur of the moment, how they'll come down to me. And I was right. saying to the, then I said to the people, something I always say, uh, you don't know what it does to me when you walk up to me. And yeah, and that's really, really true. You know, you walk up to me I and know say so what my that. show means yeah. to you and all that. And these little, and then next, so then, this girl, uh, you know, she's uh, given her peace and all that. And then she says to me, I thought she was kidding. Mr. Phil, you're making me emotional. You're making me cry. Aww. I thought she was kidding. I didn't believe it. So I was still talking. I look over. The tears are coming Aww. down her cheeks. Oh, that's nice. So they put the camera right on her. And I said, folks, what you're seeing is real. You know, this isn't rehearsed. This, this is what she feels about us. Yeah. All of a sudden, the phones are ringing off the hook. And it said, on, they were flashing. The phones are busy. Please call back. Wow. Yes. All right. So that's great. Right. So I followed that. I followed that through all the years. All right. And I Whatever you're doing, keep it up, BB. Yeah. And every year I've done that and made somebody else cry. Ah. Uh. One year. And, 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 and this was a miracle. To the 2003 telethon, you know who I did it? Who? Diane. No way, Jose. Ah. That's right. <laughs> Knocked her I, I'm telling you. Wow. Then the, the, the following, another one who was saying, you'll never do it. You'll never do it. All right. Good for so, you. So this year. Well, aren't you going to do a song yes. for us? I'm wondering who it's going to be this year. Uh, I don't know. Don't talk. Talk to the hand. <laughs> now nah, you're prepared. Okay. I'm wearing waterproof makeup. I will. I promise. Yeah, you better. Yeah, I don't normally. Okay, uh, folks. I'm going to do my patriotic song called We'll Stand Too Old because 9-11 is uh, approaching us. It's coming up this Tuesday. So uh, this is in um, honor of 9-11 and that our country should be in a better place from now on. We'll stand tall. We will stand together. We will stand. 
stand together. We'll stand tall. We'll stand tall. For our country if it calls. For our country if it calls. And we'll stand tall. We'll stand tall. Everyone wave all oh glory. Everyone wave all oh glory. Freedom for the world. Freedom for the world. Peace for everyone. Peace for everyone. We'll stand tall. We'll stand tall. Cause we are all brothers. We all are brothers. We'll stand tall. We'll stand tall. One for all and all for one. One for all and all for one. Stand tall. Cause we are all brothers. Cause we all are brothers. We'll stand tall. We'll stand tall. One for all and all for one. One for all and all for one. Yes, we'll stand tall. We'll stand tall. What's going on? He's going off and coming back on. All right. Oh, for Pat CD. All right. You have to get Pat up here. Let me yes, move. We want to shuffle my, shuffle my butt okay. right over. Uh, we want to call Pat up. Come on over. Come on in. The water's fine. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Hi. 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 Pat, how are you? Very good, thank you. How are you? Good, okay. thank you. I liked your song, Phil. Thank you. Nice. I He's very uh, patriotic. <laughs> I was. Uh, that song is by uh, written by our very own Carl Richards. Uh huh. And it's in uh, memory of all our troops. And who's singing on the CD? We. He has some backup singers. A right? bunch of uh, backup singers. Uh, singing behind him, mm -hmm. and I narrate the song. Mm -hmm. And I've done this song for many different patriotic festivals, as well as for different Fourth of July festivals. This past year, I did it in Liberty, New York. That's right, yeah. I opened it up in Liberty. Yep. Nice. A few years ago, I op opened up one in Middletown, and I did a 9-11 festival last year with it. A Perfect song for that, right? 9-11 festival. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So tell us a little about yourself and your music. Oh, well, first, wow. tell us your full name. Oh, Pat Lamana. Okay. And um, well, this this CD I did in uh, it came out in two thousand nine, 
but I've actually been singing and writing songs since I was a kid. I just sort of never took it very seriously. In 2005, I went to a, a songwriting camp called Summer Songs that's at the Ashokan Center, and that kind of made me get more serious about this. Good. So yeah, it was a great experience. I'm actually now working on a second CD. It should be out in a month or two. So, and actually, there is a song on here about September 11th, but I didn't think about you know, doing it tonight. It's kind of sad. It would make you cry. So <laughs> but if people get the CD, they can hear it. Wow. So well, where where will you be? Um, yes. are you, are you have any upcoming dates of where you'll be? Where do you do, uh, where do you perform? Uh, well, I, I do a lot of open mics and uh, things here and there. Um, the next thing that I know about of any import is um, October fourteenth. I'm going to be opening for Linda McRae at the Borderline Folk Music Club in New City. Nice, New in City, Rockland New York County, right? Yeah, familiar. Used Rockland to live in County. Chester, so. Oh, okay. And used to live in Suffern. Uh huh. So okay. no, yeah. I live in Poughkeepsie, by the way. Okay. And so. um, now, ex what is your motivation and your inspiration for your songs? Hmm. A lot of my songs have some political import to them, but I think most of the ones I'm going to do tonight are not particularly political. I am going to do one peace song. Um, but I, I, I kind like of Democrats reflected. versus Republicans? Uh, not political that way. Just. Oh. Uh, um, I'm for peace, I'm for justice, as, as you know, you were talking about in the song, that we're all brothers. That's kind of the message that I try to get across. Yes. yes. Um, and then just songs about things that happened to me. Some of the songs I'm gonna do tonight are just stories about the things that, uh, that I've been through and reflecting on them, and hopefully there's a certain amount of universality in them. Nice, very nice. Oh, we're looking forward to hearing you. I know Phil's heard your CD, and mm -hmm. Sandy has heard, yes. his wife has heard your CD, but I've never heard it, so I'm looking forward right. to it. Good. Okay, Good. so you could go up there and go get set up. Take it away, Pat. song on the CD. I can't hear myself in the monitor. Um, I don't know if that's a problem. I can't hear my voice in the monitor. I can hear the guitar. Hello, hello. That's better. Oh, that's way better. Okay, thank you very much. And I, I want to thank the cameraman Craig and the sound man Fritz for the help that they are here, as well as thanking Phil for inviting me. So this is the first song on my CD. I think that's all I have to say about it. <laughs> sing to the mountains, sing to the stars, sing to your lovers wherever they are, in trouble and sorrow, in gladness and praise, I'll sing till the end of my days. I am not famous, I'm not on TV, until now. Two hands that can work and a voice that can sing.
you, thank you. Well, this next one, actually, this is a, um, one of a couple of peace songs that I had thought to do. Um, this is the story of a woman by the name of Peace Pilgrim, or that's what she called herself. Um, in 1953, she shed her name, her identity, and just took the name Peace Pilgrim and walked back and forth across the country many, many times for 28 years, talking to people about peace, giving out little pamphlets about peace. Um, she was featured in a lot of um, newspaper stories at the time and on television and on radio. Um, not terribly well known, but there are some people who have heard of her. So this is um, this song is kind of her story, and a lot of it is her own words. And actually, the story about this is um, the song is as I wrote it on the album, and um, I used to participate in a peace vigil in Wappingers Falls, and Pete Seeger would come frequently to that peace vigil as well. And he heard me sing that song, and he said you know, you could write another verse to that song. You could write a verse about how Peace Pilgrim is with us at this corner, even though she died a long time ago. So of course, I went home and I wrote that verse. So <laughs> I'm gonna sing it with that verse, which is not on the album, but um, I always do it now. Show us we can all 
you. <clears throat> okay, well this one is most people's favorite on the album. And it is a true story. Um, I was talking before about Summer Songs, which is this songwriting camp I went to in 2005 and continue to go every year since. Um, another organization I'm part of is called People's Music Network of Songs for Freedom and Struggle. And it's an organization which promotes political songs to promote social justice. And uh, they have two gatherings a year, and one of them is in High Falls. In the first weekend in June, it always meets in High Falls, which is not that far from here. So if people go to peoplesmusic.org, they can learn more about those gatherings. Um, as I say, one gathering is the first weekend in June, the other one is the last weekend in January. And I was coming home in January 2009 from one of these lovely weekends, and this is what awaited me when I got home. True story. <laughs> Oh. 
So this song was written in response to a contest, which I did not win, but I had fun writing the song. The uh, rules of the contest were, it had to be a song about traveling, it had to be new, in other words, not previously recorded or around for a while, and it had to be true. So I was thinking about this, and I said, well, yeah, I'd like to mm. enter this contest, but I, don't, I used to travel a lot, but I don't do much traveling anymore. So that became the chorus to the song. Well, so now I'm going to do some songs from the new album that hopefully will be out in a month or two. And um, <clears throat> on the theme, I guess, of Poughkeepsie and local stuff, I want to do a song I wrote about the walkway over the Hudson. That um, Have you ever been on the walkway? No? Oh, boy. Got to go on the walkway. It's, it's really fabulous. So this is it. This sort of tells the, the history of it a little bit. <laughs>
Okay, well now I'm, I'll do my um, peace song. Actually, if Lori comes back, it's got a really singable chorus. This is a song that's really meant to sing along, so um, if anybody wants to do that, I would really appreciate it. As I say, the chorus is very easy, very easy to sing along on. I was hoping Lori would be here because she's got a beautiful voice, but we'll manage, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. How much time have I got now? You have a little more time. Yeah, a little more time. Okay, well, I got... I, oh, okay. Well, then maybe I just have time for one more song, because the last one I was going to do would require retuning the guitar, and it's a long song. So, okay, so I'll, I'll do this one. Um, <clears throat> David Roth is one of the instructors at, uh, at Summer Songs. And... Um, uh, he's, he's, I don't know how many people are familiar with David Roth, but he's just a wonderful singer-songwriter. And um, I, was, I was stuck on this particular song. I was having trouble. I had the chorus, and I didn't know where to go from there. And he said, well, sing me the chorus. Let's see what we can do. And he kind of gave me an idea for the third verse. I actually wrote the third verse. And, but once that verse was written, I was fine, and I got the next two down really quickly. So... Um, 
I guess you could say this is a co-write with David Roth. Um, what else can I say about it? There's a Quaker saying that goes, you will find your vocation where the world's greatest need meets your deepest love. So that's where the chorus of the song comes from. And it's a song that I'd like to dedicate to all singer-songwriters out there, people who have mentored and inspired me, like Pete Seeger and David Roth and Bob Dylan and Mr. Phil and uh, all the rest of them and the many who have graced this show, I'm sure. Thank you. 